let's pray together. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of our, our hearts, God, why, they, may they be nothing compared to what your Holy Spirit will do in our midst in this moment. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, at Gregton, this has been kind of a strange week. We have had uh, three people to pass away. In fact, all three of them died within 24 hours of each other. Uh, they were all older pillars of the church, and we will miss them uh, deeply. And in the midst of our grieving and, and loss, it made me start thinking about some things. Uh, it made me, for example, uh, one of them wanted in their service for us to say, uh, morning has broken, and um, morning is broken like the first morning, blackbird is broken. And, um, and I was looking up the scripture verse for that, and it comes in the book of Lamentations. You know, to lament about pouring out your griefs and your sorrow. So I started reading through the book of Lamentations. And in it, sure enough, the writer is talking about the pain that he feels in his heart and his homelessness and in everything. And then right in the middle of him pouring out his heart about his grief, all of a sudden he stops. It's interrupted. That, that pain and grief is interrupted. And he stops. And he says, surely God, God is able to deliver us um, from our pain. And I thought, how kind of weird that is. It led me to think about the Apostle Paul when he is being beaten and put on trial and run out of town. And if you want to talk about somebody having a bad day, he has a bunch of bad days over and over again. But he stands right up there in front of everybody, Romans chapter 8, and what he says is, hey, I am convinced of this one thing. Now, if you didn't think you been put on trial and run out of town, every time you try to get something great started, it just seems like people got mad at you. Um, I'm not sure this would be your one thing. But he stands up there and he says, hey, I am convinced of this one thing. There is nothing in life or in death, nothing on the earth or under the earth or above the earth, nothing in all of creation that will separate us from the love of God that we know in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I thought to myself, how strange, how strange. I'm in the midst of all the trial, the one thing you want to say is we rejoice and give thanks. That in the midst of holiness and despair, what you want to say is, as I want to give God thanks, and I'm convinced the one thing, the love of God. <laughs> and it hit me in all that thing that we are a pretty strange people. We are a pretty strange people. Now, you can turn to, this is the part where you turn to the person beside you, and you say to them, hey, the preacher is talking about you today. Okay? And so just go ahead. Now, the preacher is talking about you today. And I hope by the time that I get through with this, that you will say thank you. That you will say thank you. Because in all the trials of life, and we have seen them kind of in a narrow picture over the last seven days at Gregson in our world. And all these voices that are clamoring about what's right and what's wrong, and in all this about the violence in the world today, we are a people who are focused not on A, not on B, and but on C. On C. And that C is Christ. That C is Christ. Because in the midst of all our trials, all our uncertainty, everything that is going on about what's right or wrong for us, we cling to this one thing, and that is Jesus Christ. Our hope yesterday, our hope today, and our hope tomorrow. It's why I love this story. Because in the right from the beginning, we're reminded how strange this thing is. We're told Jesus is on the boat, he gets off of the boat, and the first person that we meet is Jairus, a ruler of the synagogue. 
Now, if you want to know ruler of the synagogue in those days, in those kind of towns, that person was it. I mean, they're it. If you can think about the most important person in Longview that you can think about or wherever you're from, you just kind of picture them. And so you know what happens with important people. They kind of stand there, and you walk up to them, and you say to them, it is so good to meet you. I am so glad. Wow, what an honor it is for me to meet you. But in this story, the most important person in the town falls down on his knees. He falls down on his knees. And he begins to beg and to plead with this traveling rabbi. My My daughter If you could but come, my daughter could be my whole. My daughter could have life again. How strange. How strange. And so it is that Jesus begins to go with him. Now the story shifts. Because all of a sudden there is this woman who has been bleeding for 12 years and we're told it's not getting any better. In fact, we're told it's getting worse and worse and worse. And she has this crazy notion in her mind, this crazy notion, if she can but touch Jesus, if she can but be in the presence of Jesus, she has it in her mind that her life can be made whole. That everything that is wrong in her life and in her world can be made right. If she can but touch Jesus. And so she goes. The crowd's pressing to and fro. And she, she has to scoot by this person and that. And she gets as close as she can. And then all that she can really do is to reach out and touch the hem of his garment. And that she does. You know what happens next. The world starts talking. The world starts saying how we ought to look at things. Jesus whirls around and says, who touched me? And the world starts saying, oh, Jesus, you got to be kidding. You got to be kidding. Do you see how many people are here? Isn't that the important thing here? How many people are here? Because what's going on is not a popular popularity contest. What's going on here is not an opinion poll about what's right and what's wrong. What's going on here is that there is this woman who is hurting and her life is broken, just like Aaron was talking about when he asked the kids to pray. But there were people whose lives are aching and their lives were broken. And there is this woman who says, life is not getting any better for me. She said, I need Jesus. I need to touch Jesus with my life. And she reaches out even the hem of his God. If we can be in the presence of God, 
If we can somehow find our hope, what is it the psalm says? My, uh, oh, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but hope, hope and wait on Jesus' name. That's why that man goes. That's why she falls down on her knees. That's why when she spills the beans about what's going on, Jesus looks at her and smiles and says, Daughter, get up. Get up. Your faith, your faith is made you well. That's what you and I believe. That's what we believe. The story goes on. It goes on and, and Jesus leaves her and she's walk, he's walking with Jairus. And all of a sudden there are these folks that come walking down the, the road and they've got some tears in their eyes. And Jairus is just thinking, you know what he's thinking, don't you? You know what he's thinking, oh no. Oh no. This is the news I don't want to hear. I don't want to know this. I, I think I know what they're about to say to me. And sure enough, they get up to Jesus and to Jairus and they look at Jairus and they say, don't trouble the master any longer. Don't trouble the master any longer, you daughter. Your daughter's Now some of you have been through that. You've been through that. And you know that's the worst moment. That's the worst moment. There are others of us who have been through moments and we have said to ourselves, I just don't think anything could be worse than this. Worse than this. So you know. You know what it's There are those of us who are going through trials right now and we're saying to ourselves, I just don't know how I'm going to get through this. I just don't see a way out of this. I just don't see that there's any possibility. Don't trouble the master any longer because real life is just real life and you've got to deal with it and that's all there is. But do you hear with me what Jesus says? Boy, he's speaking it to my heart right now. Speaking it to your heart as well. Because Jesus looks at Jairus and he says, do not fear. Do not fear. Have faith. Do not fear. Have faith. I look at the world and I, you do too, and you say to yourself, oh, oh I just don't see it. We look at our lives and our trials and, and what's going on and we're tempted just to say, see how. So Jesus is speaking across your life and mine across this world, and he is saying to us over, you remember that song you learned on uh, the vacation Bible school when I was a little kid? We, we would sing this song, and it was this song, he got the whole world in his hands. Remember that song? Remember how it goes? He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole wide world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got those who look at a flag one way in his hand. He's got those who look at it another way in his hand. He's got those who look at same-sex marriage one way in his hand. He's got those who look at it the opposite way in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. Now, do you believe that? Do you believe that? Jesus looked at Jairus and said, Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Have faith. Have faith. I thought about it another way. I am a baby boomer if there ever was one. And music is kind of my deal. And, and I remember when I was growing up, there was a song uh, by this guy, Don McLean, and it was called American Pie. Um, you, some of you may remember that song. And, uh, it, and uh, we could all sing Bye Bye. And okay, but we're not going to. And uh, um, but, uh, there was this line at the end of it. And he said, um, he said, when he was thinking about life, he said, And the three men that I admire most, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they caught the last train for the coast. The day is now. Now, friends, do we believe that there's a trial right now that the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost said, good luck to you, I am on my way? Is there a circumstance in this world today, be it ISIS and all that violence or anything, where your God has said, gee, I hope you figure it out, and I hope you know. 
Is there any circumstance in your life where God has said to you, oh, good luck with that, good luck with that? And said, me, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, well, catch the last train for the coast and hope you make it. <coughs> no. No. We're on that room, on that road. Jesus looked at Jerry straight in the eyes as he looked at you in your heart today and whatever is going on with you. And he says these words over and over again. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Have faith. Have faith. And Jerry, though he doesn't understand it, he keeps walking on down that road with Jesus. Walking down the road. Everybody around him is saying, well, that kid's dead. I don't know why they're doing this. This doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense to me. He keeps walking on down that road. And when they get to the house, um, Jesus says to them, he says, look, the little girl's just asleep. And then they all start laughing. Say, this is the most ridiculous, strangest, weirdest thing we've ever heard in our lives. Our lives. I'm glad Linda read those words. Because every time I try to say hallelujah, I get all tongue tied. You know what he said, don't you? You know what he said. Little girl, get up. Get up. And sure enough, that little girl caught up. And she began to walk. I don't know what it is in your life. It may be something deep and dark. It may be something frankly obvious. I don't know what the solutions are in the world around us. But I am convinced of this. I am convinced of this. That the very best that we do is to be touched by the presence of the living God. The kids sang for us about God's love. He is jealous for me. Love's like a hurricane. I am the sea. I've been beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. All of a sudden, um, okay, I just went blank. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, I am unaware. I am unaware of the afflictions. Of his afflictions. Come on, Aaron. Blessed by glory. Of glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and amazing. Thank you. 